Digital, David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing the Scepter 32 inch prime gaming monitor. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in my video description below. I've also reviewed other Scepter monitors on my channel, so be sure to check out those videos. You can see the nice retail box and packaging right here with fantastic product photography, the Scepter logo and branding, and some quick tech specs for us. So technically it's 31.5 inches in screen size measured diagonally, 1440p quad HD resolution, 144 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond MPRT response time, 400 nits for the brightness. I'm really excited to try that out. That is a really bright panel. And the panel type is IPS. We got an edgeless bezel design, adaptive sync supported, HDR supported, ergonomic adjustable stand, built-in speakers, RGB back cover lighting, and monitor covers are supported. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the package contents. Here are all the package contents. First up, you can see our product literature right here. We have our warranty information followed by our user guide and manual, complete with safety instructions, important information, then you can see we have a nice note to Scepter customers with their technical assistance and customer service and support, phone number and email address. Then you can learn more about the package contents, how to install the monitor stand. You can see this is Visa mount compatible, 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter. Then you can see we have installation of the monitor cover right there and our table of contents giving us a nice front view and rear view of the monitor. Then we can learn more about the stand adjustment and rotation. Rear view with buttons, so you can learn about the menu controls. Then we can learn more about the connections right here. So you can see they even specify on the connections what the ports are capable of. So we have a display port 1.2, 144 hertz. HDMI 2.0, 144 hertz. Then we have HDMI 1.4 at 75 hertz and an additional HDMI 1.4 at 75 hertz. So three HDMI, one display port. We also have our headphone jack as well, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. They show you how to connect it to your PC and your headset. More connection options for you right here. Then we have our OSD menu breakdown, walking you through step-by-step -step all the picture settings color settings, and then you can see we have some additional charts for us about the supported resolutions and refresh rates. So 1440p at 144 hertz via HDMI or DisplayPort. Troubleshooting, suggestions and advice for you. How to clean the LED monitor. More warranty information, more tech specs for you. 30,000 hours for the LED backlight, HDR 400, disclaimers, trademarks, and other information for you. Very helpful user guide and manual. Then you can see we have some included cables right here. Just our standard power cord, which is fantastic. We have a display port cable. We have correctly monitored kits for us with our screws and mounting hardware. Fantastic Scepter Phillips head screwdriver. You can see we have our stand right here, and we also have our nice gaming blinders. We want to use those and install those with the Scepter logo and branding. And last but not least, we have the 32-inch monitor itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. So here's the front of the panel up close. You can see up in the top left-hand corner, we have a peel here, sticker to remove the protective plastic film. Bottom left-hand corner, we have an HDMI 144 hertz sticker. Front and center at the bottom, we got the Scepter logo and branding. Bottom right hand corner, we have an indicator light for you. Beautiful thin bezel-less design at the sides and the top. Gunmetal black is our color. Now let's go ahead, let's flip it over. This monitor's got a good weight to it too, it's pretty heavy. Before I flip it all the way over, check out how thin it is. You can get a good feel for the thickness of this monitor. Now let's go ahead, let's very gently set it down. And you can see on the back, we got Scepter Quad HD. You can see our mounting bracket right here. This is Visa mount compatible with the included hardware. You can see on the left-hand side, we got all of our different menu buttons right here, power button at the bottom, built-in speakers, Scepter sticker with more 
product information. This is Model Y32. One of my favorite features about Scepter monitors, you can see clearly labeled ports for you. So our three HDMI ports, again, HDMI 2.0, and then two HDMI 1.4 ports, HDMI 2.0, 144 hertz, HDMI 1.4, 75 hertz, our display port 1.2 at 144 hertz, and then you can see our headphone jack right there, power plug, then we got our RGB light right here. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand installed. Here's everything we need to assemble the stand. The first thing you need is the screw kit that's labeled base neck screws. So we have our four neck screws right here, they're longer. And then we have our two shorter base screws. So here's the base screw next to the neck screw. And again, the base screw is the shorter screw. We have our Phillips head screwdriver. Also, you can see we have this red piece of plastic right here that we need to snap on in place as well. So just go ahead and line it up and let it snap in place. There you go, we got a nice red accent there on the base stand. Now we're ready on the base stand, we're gonna drop those two screws in and we're gonna attach this piece together. So it's gonna drop in like so, flip it over. You'll be able to see right here where the two screws go again. So go ahead, drop the two base screws in there and tighten them down. Now you can see we have them tightened in place Everything's solid together. It's not going to separate and you can see we can stand it up on its own. Now we're ready for the last step. That's going to be lining this up and dropping it right in. We're going to be taking our four neck screws, dropping them in place and tightening them down with our included screwdriver. So now you can see we have everything tightened down. We're ready to go ahead and lift up the monitor. So check it out right there. That's going to be at our max height adjustment to our maximum height but we can adjust that height. Here's our minimum height. We have a tilt adjustment as well. So that's our max tilt down and then we can tilt it up. And then we can also rotate the screen to the left or to the right, depending on the viewing angle we want. So we do want to do some portrait viewing right here. You can do that right there. Nice vertical view. We can rotate it the other way too. Same thing, nice vertical and portrait viewing. And we can adjust the height and the tilt this way as well. So we have both sides. We can also swivel this too to the left and to the right. So check that out. You can see we can adjust our viewing angle a little bit to the left or to the right with a nice swivel. So we have swivel, we have height, and we have rotation as well with this monitor stand. All the features you could ask for and want in a monitor stand. So it's really nice that this comes with it by default. Now let's go ahead, let's get the gaming blinders installed. So you can see everything we need to get the covers installed. First up, we have our two kits. We have our monitor side cover screws and we have our monitor side cover rubber pieces right here to put in after we're done with the screws. You can see we got our Scepter branded left and right side covers. We got our top cover as well. These pieces just slide together. You can see what it looks like right there. We can go ahead, we can slide this piece in too. So just line everything up like you see right here. Let's go a little bit further back and then we just gently press it in place. So now we have officially assembled the top piece. And then what you're going to do is you can see on the monitor right here, we have our screw holes. So it's as simple as lining everything up with the screw holes and putting it in place. So same thing for the top. There's screw holes up at the top that you can see that we're able just to line the cover up with those holes. And then you're gonna tighten everything down in place with the included screwdriver. So here we go, you can see I got the cover installed. Everything looks great, very simple installation. Start with the sides first, then install the top. But you can see I can lift up the corner of the top cover and we can move out the side cover if we wanted. So it's not the end of the world, but I'd highly recommend starting with the sides first, then finishing with the top cover. But check that out. Everything looks great with it. Really cool if you want to hone in and focus on your gaming. Now let's go ahead, let's power it on and look at the menu settings. So we got everything plugged in and powered on right now. Check it out. You can see our Windows 10 display settings. We're getting our maximum resolution of 1440p, 144 hertz for our max refresh rate. Now let's look at some of the menu options. You can see with the menu, we have quick start guide, picture, color, and system options. And we're getting our 1440p, 144 hertz via display port. Let's go into quick start. You can see the options that we have right here. Backlight, brightness, contrast, preset, volume, aspect ratio, source. We have our blue light shift, so a nice blue light filter. 
adaptive sync as well. Let's exit out of that. Let's go to our next option. You can see we have picture. You can see very similar options. MPRT, you can see down there, and we have multi-window. If we want to do picture in picture or picture by picture, we can with this monitor. Let's go look at our next setting. So we have color right here. You can see we can change some color settings. Blue light shift again. Now let's look at the last option, it's system. You can see we can turn overdrive on or off, adaptive sync, HDR, sleep mode. Our back cover light, we can tweak those settings. Language, OSD options too, if you want to enable those for gaming. Volume, mute, and reset. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the back RGB light. So you can see the RGB backlight right here, check it out. We're currently in the user mode, so we can choose different light mode settings right here. So this is static, it's gonna stay static, just like you see right there. Then we can change it to strobe, so you can see the strobe option. And then you can see breathing, it's gonna have a nice pulsing breath to it. Pretty cool. Then we have our color options right here. So you can see we have red, now we're at purple, switch to blue. Then we have a couple more colors too that we can see right here. Check it out. Then we're back to red right there. Next up you can see we have our brightness. So this is strong, weak, mild, and back to strong. So let's go ahead, let's change it to static. And let's go ahead, let's keep it red for a minute and let's go from strong, this is the max brightness, to the minimum brightness, mild, so our medium brightness, and then we're back to our max. So three options, looks better in person than what you can see on the camera. It's really a cool light. Love that we have the color options there and we can change the different light modes too. Really a cool feature and a nice touch. So on the screen now, you can see I have a full size image and we're gonna cycle through some of the different presets for the image right here so you can get a feel for what it's like depending on the mode that you're choosing. This is without even tweaking anything else. So you can see we have the user preset right here where I did adjust the brightness all the way up to 100% and it is super powerful. It's actually washing out a lot of the photo which is amazing that the monitor's that bright. But you can see here we go, this is our standard then we have our RTS and our FPS, depending on the games you're playing. You can quickly cycle to those modes. We have an eco mode as well too, a movie mode. And then we're back to our user settings. So let's cycle through that one more time, but with the lights off. So here we go, you can see user mode with the lights off. Look at how bright that is at max brightness. Then we have our standard preset right here. Looks great. Then you can see RTS, FPS, eco, movie, and then we're back to our user settings. So I have the monitor using our standard preset profile right here for the colors. IPS panels are typically known for their beautiful and accurate colors as well as their great viewing angles. So with this monitor, let's go ahead, let's just gently rotate it a little bit here on the table so you can get a feel for what it's like to view content on this monitor, especially off to the side. So check that out. Obviously there's some glare here in the studio with the really harsh lighting environment. And it's gonna look better in person. But you can get a feel for what it's like and how maybe the color changes a little bit too when you're viewing it off to the side. But honestly, in person, from where I'm even viewing it from, it's not bad. It's really an enjoyable panel. I love IPS panels for their color and their incredible viewing angles. Obviously it's a much more enjoyable experience if you're looking front on, but that's true with any panel type of monitor. But really a nice display and panel right there. Let's go ahead, let's do that one more time, but with the lights off. All right, so the lights are off. We got the video up still. Let's go ahead, let's just rotate it a little bit. Check out that beautiful picture quality. Even from the side, guys, color's not distorted, hasn't changed at all. Great viewing angle. I mean, right there, I think you can see a little bit more of a darker spot here, but even, you know, at that angle, that's incredible. And obviously, can't really see it anymore. But check that out.
you're over the shoulder, off to the side, you're not gonna have any trouble viewing content on this beautiful IPS panel. Now I got a web browser pulled up right here. Just wanted to show you guys what it's like to view and consume content using this monitor. Check out how beautiful the YouTube trending page looks right here. Everything looks great. Plenty of screen real estate for browsing the web, coding, word processing, content creating, gaming. Here's a popular tech blog. You can see what it's like. Everything's very clear and crisp. Always good to have the detail. 1440p is greatly appreciated at a larger sized um, screen like this at 31.5 inches measure diagonally. So we can go ahead to, let's just click on, let's just click on this AMD article, just so you can see different fonts, text, images all being displayed. Very enjoyable experience. And then we have the Amazon shopping page too. Check that out. You can see how everything looks browsing the web with this monitor. Now we have everything set up to test out the built-in speaker quality. I'm using a binaural microphone. This is gonna give us realistic sound capture like you were here next to me in the studio listening for yourselves. We're playing a song off the album Golden Hour by Music Chef. We have the monitor volume set to 90 and the Windows 10 volume output is set to 100. So let's go ahead, let's play the song and give it a listen. Now we're gonna to listen to a couple of seconds of another song. This one's titled Solo Company. So powering the display today is an Intel i9-9900K and an RTX 3070. I wanted to show you guys the NVIDIA control panel really quickly and what it looks like to set this up with G-Sync. So the first thing we did is we went ahead, we turned on adaptive sync within the Scepter monitor settings. And then under our NVIDIA control panel, you can see we selected our display, it's the Scepter Y32. We enabled everything, but you can see selected display is not validated as G-Sync compatible, but I'm not expecting any issues. So now we got one of my favorite tests pulled up on the display right now. We got the Blur Busters motion test. So you can see our alien going across the screen at different FPS values. So we got 144 Hertz refresh rate, 1440p and 144 FPS right there. Check out how smooth that is. No staggering, stuttering, tearing, blurring, anything like that, especially compared to the 72. FPS value in the 36. So this drastically improves as you double your FPS, you can see 36 to 72 to 144. Having those extra frames with that higher refresh rate really give you a beautiful image quality and picture. Nothing wrong with the 72, but there's a pretty big jump up between your 60 FPS, 75 Hertz, 75 FPS in your 144 Hertz, 144 FPS for gaming having that high refresh rate definitely helps for all those extra frames. You can see how smooth the alien is going across the screen. So now we have the monitor all set up and ready to go to test out our input lag. Keep in mind, input lag is different from response time. Response time is gonna measure the amount of time it takes a pixel to change colors like from black to white or gray to gray. Input lag is gonna measure the amount of time it takes from when you press a button, maybe on a keyboard and a mouse, to when it materializes on the screen. So that's what we're doing right here with our tester. So let's go ahead, let's put it up here. Let's see the results that we get. 18.3, 19.4, 20. It's gonna fluctuate some. So around 18, 19 would be a safe bet. This is gonna be a higher value. 
Okay, 22, 24. And then at the bottom, we'll have our highest value yet. So we can kind of get a range of the input lag here. It's going to range from, let's just say, 18 milliseconds to 27, 28 milliseconds. So first up, we're going to play a round of Fortnite right here. Check out the settings. You can see 144 FPS, 1440p. Everything looks great so far. Very responsive. I don't want to make you dizzy, but I'm going to move it back and forth, up and down, so you guys get a feel for what it's like. If you notice any screen tearing, anything like that with all the extra movement and how everything refreshes and responds. I'm using the standard color profile still. I think everything looks really nice. I've always been a big fan of IPS panels for gaming and content creating myself. Right, let's see if we get that person. Got him. Got him. Got him. Let's go. And I couldn't even survive. All right, now you can see we got Warzone up and we're playing. We're ready to go. Match is about to start. Check out the quality and how everything looks on this monitor. Very nice. Pretty cool intro too. Sequence of events right here as so you fly in on the helicopter. Battle Royale. Mark a drop point for your team. You'll lead them in. Avoid the gas. Get to the now let's drop out. And here we go. Enemy dropping into the AR. Love the large screen size. Everything looks great. Come on, can we get him? No! Dang, that was close. So let me show you guys my final thoughts after using the Scepter 32 inch monitor. First, I've had a great experience, no issues, nothing weird, very happy overall with the resolution, the screen size, all the features that we get. We have plenty of IO on the back with our HDMI ports, our display port, and our auxiliary jack. We have built in speakers. Love the built in speakers again. They are built-in monitor speakers, so take it for what it's worth. I'd always rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. This is 400 nits brightness too. This is a fantastically bright monitor. So if you're in the market for a bright monitor, this is definitely gonna be one that you want to put on your list to check out. Just like the speakers, I'd rather have the monitor be so bright that I have to turn it down than not bright enough and I can't turn it up. So again, rather have the speakers, not need them, than need the speakers, not have them. I'd rather have it be so bright at the turn it down than not bright enough and I cannot turn it up anymore. The stand's really nice too, very functional, but don't forget if you don't like the stand for some reason, this is Visa mount compatible, so we can always add a different stand or swap that out. Keep in mind though, this is a pretty heavy monitor. It's one of the heaviest monitors I've reviewed, even at 32 inches. It's definitely a beefy boy. Even though, you know, it's not like super thick, it's just really, really weighted internal, I guess. There's just a lot going on there. The RGB, I really like the RGB on the back. I wish there was more of it, and I wish it was even brighter, but it's really cool that we have the RGB. Don't forget with the built-in cover too that you can remove and not even install if you don't want it. But if you do want it, it's really cool to have that feature just kind of up your gaming performance and not have any distractions, just looking with the nice cover on. Overall, I expect this monitor to hold up long term. I've been using Scepter panels for the last couple of years. I purchased two like three years ago. They've been running somewhere between four and eight hours a day every day. 
I've had zero issues with them, no dead pixels or anything like that. So I'm expecting very similar results and longevity with this Scepter 32 inch monitor as well. Overall, I think it's a solid choice. If you're looking for a complete package for maybe your gaming or content creation needs, you definitely wanna check this monitor out. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.